Yo, what's going on guys? This is Bunny Muffins. I'm a former Challenger player and before we just released a video about how to get to Diamond and after that people were wondering like how do I take it to the next step? How do I get to Master? So I recorded three games for you guys to go over how to play the game, pretty much go over leveling, econing, unit choices, composition choices, um, how to play flexibly because we're going to be playing a lot of different compositions today and we did them last game as well. I think we only played a comp twice uh, or played the same comp twice. But yeah, let's hop into this one. I'm gonna go for the crit because after sword, I like either rod or crit. Those are all really good. Probably should have taken the rod there. I think rod is one of the better items right now, but I thought other people were trying to fight for it. You just wanna guarantee getting an item you know how to play with in the early game. It doesn't really have to be like the best one that you could possibly get. Um, but we get the Yasuo with the crit, not gonna complain about that. So after this, we get a tier, which is good for hand of justice if we want to go for like some sort of Yasuo carry or like just any early game damage unit, they're going to make great use of the hand of justice, but don't really want that here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pick up this Nidalee because we have this other Garen in the shop. So we could potentially do like some sort of Warlord game. I do prefer Sharpshooter Nidalee just because the buff is just better. But if you're wind streaking, you might as well just go for it. And notice here how I locked that shop. A lot of people don't do that. Um, it's a very rare thing, don't get me wrong, but like there's always gonna be a time where you would do that. Cause the way you decide whether you lock or not is say to yourself like, what do I wanna see in my next shop? Well, for me, I'd wanna see a Warlord unit and a Sharpshooter. And those were both in my shop. And I even have this extra Nidalee to buy uh, if I wanna go for like a Nidalee three star. Nidalee three star kind of sucks, so you don't really want that, but the Vanguard from the, or the Warlord from the extra Garen and the Sharpshooter from the Vein meant that like, hey, maybe I should lock here. Uh, so here I don't really care about too much. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Garen um, just because I want to two-star him. But I really wanted to see another Vanguard so I, so I could level up and play two Vanguard, but that did not end up happening. I'm thinking about slamming Hand of Justice on this Nidalee. I think I should have built Trap Claw on her, but whenever I go for some sort of Warlord build, I normally run Katarina carry. I don't know if that's correct or not, because you could kind of be very flexible whenever you play Warlords, because you're kind of just transitioning into the late game. And I make a huge mistake here. I wanted to level up um, because I'm just slow. Like, <laughs> I guess it shows you can still uh, get up or get high ranks without um, without playing too well. And it actually costed us a game because Yasuo is at 40 health and the other one's at 10 health. So it's just, yeah, I'm not in a good mood already after this started, but it's okay because it's just a game at the end of the day. And like I'd level up fast enough in like 99% of my other games, but it really does hurt us this game because we're going Warlords and Warlords get stronger whenever they win around. So that just really hurts me internally inside that I did that um, and didn't level up fast enough. But we'll go ahead and play the Vi here. Or actually, no, we got the Hecarim from the Vanguard. Uh, so we're going to go play that. We should play this Teemo over the Vein. And we'll skip ahead. Win that round there. But we, again, lost the stacks from the first round. We don't get a win streak bonus either. So that first round really, really hurt us. But just because you make like a small mistake early game doesn't mean you give up or like can't win anymore. Uh, it's like people make so many mistakes, they just don't realize it. So you don't really get punished for yours that hard. But just try not to make too many because they do add up over time, just something to be aware of. But like, don't give up if you make like a small mistake like that. Well, that wasn't a small mistake. That was like a medium mistake, I'd say. Maybe even big. I don't know. It costed us a lot. <laughs> All right, this guy, he's, was this like a sharpshooter or dusk vein? We got smashed by him. My front line just disappeared somehow. Unless, no, Nidalee doesn't have this. Uh, not too bad of a loss, though. But maybe if we had the Warlord buff from the last game, we might have been able to do a little more damage. I don't really know. Because his vein's kind of low. He did have the ZZ Rot out still, but if my Garen lives longer, my backline lives longer and maybe gets one more spell rotation off, you never know. Uh, so on this carousel, we had three items. We had a tier, a glove, and a belt. I would have gone for Spatula, for like Warlord Spatula. Getting to like six Warlords early is really, really strong. Uh, but we could also go for this Katarina because I want that glove on her anyways. But uh, did we end up getting it? We did. So that is perfect. 
So now we only need one more Warlord for six Warlord. We could go ahead and build a Hand of Justice on Katarina and have another Critical Strike for Quicksilver Sash, which is my favorite item on her. But you could also go for Trap Claw. It's not that bad, um, but I just prefer having... What's that item called? Uh, Quicksilver Sash more. Uh, whether you play Pike or Teemo is a really big question. I think Teemo is just such a good early game unit that I want to keep him in. Also, Nidalee is better in the early game, so I want to have Sharpshooter out for that. Uh, as the game goes on, Nidalee just gets weaker. The reason why she's so strong early game is because there aren't that many units in the early levels. There are just four or five people, and since she does really high single target damage, uh, that often kills a unit right away. Uh, that's why she's much better in the early game than the late game. So I should just go ahead and build this Hand of Justice, throw the other critical strike on this Akali, which is what I... Not Akali, Katarina, which is what I do. Do I actually end up winning this? It's going to take a while, so I'm going to skip ahead. And no, he we lost. So again, maybe if we had the Warlord buff from the previous round, which might have gotten us this Warlord buff, we might not have lost this fourth round. So it was, it did end up being like a pretty big mistake. Let's just put it at that. Uh, but we get an Aatrox here. I'm going to go ahead and play him over the Hecarim and try to make interest here. We have two, four, six, eight. And if we win, we could sell the Nidalee uh, for 10 gold. So this guy, he's not looking too strong. Actually, he's got Aurelia. Aurelia is a pretty good unit early. Uh, maybe our Garen does something. Ooh, that was a good Aatrox ult for the... Katarina. So whenever you play Aatrox and Katarina, try to keep the Aatrox near the Katarina because he's going to pull units in. If I put Aatrox on the top left and Katarina on the right side, Aatrox would actually pull units away from Katarina and she might not get her full ultimate off. Super close fight. We were able to squeeze this one out and just sell the extra Nidalee. But yeah, that small mistake, it potentially costed us like a five game win streak. I don't actually know if it would have helped that much on this fight, but it might have just because it's really hard to tell uh, how much it actually would have changed because my front line melted instantly. And if I have maybe a little bit more health on the Garen, maybe I could have done more damage, get a second Teemo spell off and killed the guy's back line because I have sharpshooter buff. But again, let's just forget about it because that is in the past and like people make so many other big mistakes that like something like that doesn't even matter until you get like really high up in the ranks. Uh, I went ahead and sold Pike. Maybe I should have kept him and sold Aatrox instead, but I kind of want to keep playing Vanguards. Uh, so that's why I ended up keeping Aatrox. I only put the Warlords in during the neutral rounds because you get a free Warlord stack whenever you do that. Uh, so you always want to try to play them whenever you're facing like the stage one units or like the neutral rounds in the in the later game so play the vanguards i'm gonna keep the sharpshooters in until i get level two katarina assassin's not gonna be that great but at level six i'll try to put in assassin or six warlord if i'm able to do it i just need one more unit which is xin Zhao, jarvin jarvin's probably the best warlord unit and i think that's all i can hit at that point all right hmm. Is there a forecast warlord? I can't remember. All right, skipping ahead here, we won that one pretty easily. Not able to make interest because we only had we had 25 gold and we could only sell these two for 29 gold, so not enough. But we end up hitting the Xin Zhao, which is pretty big, so we could go for the six warlord right now. I think I end up playing Teemo over the Aatrox because I have three frontline units, so I want three damage units. I didn't want four damage units and two, or I didn't, I did not want four tank units and two damage units. So that's why I made that choice there. Also, again, in the early game, Nidalee and Teemo, for some reason, they're just like a lot better than they are later into the game. So it's perfectly fine to run them now. But if this was like later game, maybe you want the Aatrox instead. So let's see what happens here. It's looking pretty good for us. Oh no, Diana, Diana, please, no, <sighs> Un unlucky, wait, maybe, oh nice, oh, I forgot that I won this round, that's pretty close, if I had more Warlord stacks, maybe that would have been a lot easier though, <laughs> alright, so we get the Jarvan, which is really nice, replace Vi for that, even though Vi has the stacks, Jarvan's just such a better unit, uh, I don't even have any attack damage by she lowers people's armor if you guys didn't know on her ability so if you are running like an attack damage comp keep 
Vi near your carry. So if I had like an Ash instead of this Nidalee, I'd play Vi where the Garen is so that she can hit people with her deep armor debuff and Ash can attack them right after. So in this game, this guy's got Chosen Vein with Runons. Pretty interesting. Again, we talked... Uh, hmm. We're going to talk about, like, I have a game later where I did play a lot of veins. It's interesting. I don't think it's, like, that great of a comp, but I have seen it a lot before. Did my Nidalee spear bug? Because it looked like it only hit one unit with Sharpshooter. Warlord definitely made a difference on this one. If I had more stacks, I would kill or win this fight. Man, that one mistake really did cost me. <laughs> I'm going to try to keep not mentioning it, but it's hard not to when it clearly had an effect on this game. <laughs> so here I'm going to go for the tier so I could go double-handed justice. I wanted a Negatron to build Quicksilver, but it just isn't on this carousel. So let's skip ahead. Uh, yeah, I just grabbed the tier there quickly. Go ahead, slam that item. It's a pretty good item combination on Katarina, double-handed justice, because what do you want on Katarina? You want damage, you want healing, and you want crowd control immunity, and you want mana. So... Hextech Gunblade and like a damage item such as Spell Crit or uh, Rabadon's Death Cap. Like obviously those are going to be fine on Katarina. You're not going to complain about that at all. But getting Double Handed Justice is also really, really, really good because it also gives her mana. So you could fit in Quicksilver Sash, Double Handed Justice, get healing most games, and get a ton of damage. Uh, sometimes you don't even need the healing if you just kill them and roll double damage. Uh, I'm not going to build the item yet because I want to save the glove for Quicksilver Sash, but just something to keep in mind for later. Okay. Kind of a weird fight. Hmm. So close. These fights are so close. I'm not going to mention it. I'm not going to mention it. We also miss interest because of that because we would have had... We had 36 gold. We could sell 3 gold here, and we could have made it to 40 gold if we won that round, but... We ended up losing because of, uh, yeah, all right. So going into the next fight, we have the Akali. Again, I don't want to play Akali over the Teemo to get Assassin buff because Katarina's not really a carry at one-star Katarina. You, you definitely want her two-star before you, you start relying on her. So I'm just going to keep the Teemo because Teemo himself does a lot of damage and it's buffing like a two-star unit. All right, we magically won this round, which is super, super nice. Right, so now we probably have full stacks on everyone. No, we still don't. We have barely any on our team. <laughs> but we get a free stack here at least, right? So I think I end up swapping the Vi for someone. Please tell me I swap the Vi in. I do not swap the Vi in. Ah, even when I have control, I make the mistakes. So we get perfect items here. We get the Warlord Spatula. We get Quicksilver Sash. And we get another Hand of Justice. And we got a Nico. Uh, that is literally everything you want to see because Nico's going to be great for getting Katarina 3-star. Uh, Warlord Spat is going to be great for any random legendary later in the game. I'm going to go ahead and put it on Akali right now because I know I'm going to sell her. But we are in a very good spot. Also, a lot of people level up on Stage 4-1, and I generally do it in like 90% of my games too. But you don't need to do it every game. So this game, I don't have... That much gold. I don't have really anything to put in. I guess I could have played an extra Teemo or something like that. Um, but I just decided not to level up because my team's not that strong. I don't think I'm going to win any rounds. And also, like, I don't plan on rolling yet. I have a Chosen already. I'm not going to sell this Nidalee to roll down for, like, a 4-cost Chosen. So I'm not, like, that desperate right now. Luckily, I faced someone who somehow lost to us despite him having Morgana 2-star. So that's really good. I think it's because he left items on his bench because he wanted to play Talon but was too late on it. Again, like there are times where mechanics matter, and for him, this was one of those times. So lucky for us, we dodged that. We got the Akali too, which is nice. Uh, Talon would be better. Pike's also better, but you know, Akali's not that bad of a unit, so who really cares at the end of the day? I want to roll down a tiny bit because you really want Katarina 2 star, but I'm just not hitting it. Also, like. We're kind of wind streaking, really not wind streaking, but we have pretty good health. Uh, so you don't need to roll down all the way to zero on this round. But I really wanted this Katarina too, and I was getting kind of tilted and rolled extra for it because I have three items on her. But I probably should have just waited and not rolled that much. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and keep the Talon because everyone plays Talon, uh, and I could use it to replace the Akali if I get him two star magically. 
But if you sold the talents for interest, that would have been perfectly fine. I don't think that would be that bad of a play. It might even be correct. Um, didn't end up winning that round. I'm going to go ahead and play Keeper. Keeper's really good in the early game, and we're still kind of early. I'm going to keep rolling because I, I just really need to hit this Katarina. But it is not happening. <laughs> we finally get it on, like, zero gold. So here, I should either sell the Akali or the Talons just because I'm at zero gold. But um, you generally don't want to roll for only one unit, which is... I know I say that a lot, and I did that here. But... Just because Katarina has three items and she's like the main carry of this comp and she's really only good in the mid game, you kind of need her, <laughs> in my opinion. Oh man, yeah, she's like these fights get so much easier once you get her level two. Like we beat a two star Riven with this, which is really nice, even though we don't have any four cost units. So skipping ahead. We have full items on everyone, so we just want to start building items for legendary units because whenever I play Warlords, I go up to nine Warlords and then I sell them slowly, uh, replacing each Warlord with like a two-star legendary or a two-star four-cost unit, and that's generally how I like to play them. Uh, so I'm going to try to get the tier here because tiers can build more Hand of Justices for Kane or build like a blue buff. Uh, but we ended up getting a tier, which is really nice. That's exactly what we wanted. Skipping ahead, I'm, I end up putting in Jin, Zin Zhao over the Nidalee because Nidalee is absolute garbage at this point in the game, and I really don't care about the Seven Warlord. It doesn't do anything. Uh, this Ari is really scary. She has... Oh my goodness. Luckily she dodged. But, oh man, Set got me. Oh man. <sighs> How do people get this with perfect perfect items so often like he has 50 gold i have 10 because i couldn't get a katarina two star it's really unfortunate right i need to yeah take out a yeah so here i have four assassin now uh could i have played that last round i forget did i have four assassin possibility last round i don't think so but yeah, look at how much damage this is about to do. I think I remember this fight. She rolled like double damage or something like that. And then like everyone instantly deleted around her. It's like really funny to watch. I still end up losing, but like whatever. It like looked kind of cool, right? <laughs> oh yeah, we could have Nikoed the Akali, but... Or not the Akali. The, I don't know why I keep confusing their names. We could have Nikoed the Katarina, but... Nikoing like a three cost in stage four feels kind of bad. And like I thought we could have gotten her three star Katarina. So that that's why I held on to the Nico. Also, we weren't really in any danger in terms of our health. But I could have Nikoed her and then just not rolled at all. So thinking about it, maybe I should have done that. Uh, wait, we didn't even hit Zin Zhao though on our roll down. So that's a little weird. Ah, man, those were just bad rolls. It, it, it happens, you know. But again, I could have just Nikoed the Katarina and just leveled up more. But... Mm, depends on how you want to play. I didn't think I was going to get that unlucky, honestly. I'm going to go ahead and put four Assassin back in instead of the random Warlords. And always replace Vi. I think she's the weakest Warlord other than Nidalee. I'm only keeping Nidalee in because she's my chosen chosen Warlord. So I'm doing a quick scout to see where to drop the Katarina, but everyone's kind of split. There are some people on the left, some people on the right, so it's not like I just kept her where she was because... There wasn't any teams favoring one side that much more than the other. Uh, so we're facing the guy in the center, which is good for us because Katarina is going to get a good ult off. But she didn't roll any damage, so it took a little longer there. We're st still able to pull out the win, which is nice, but yeah, you, you generally want to <laughs> want to roll some damage. Uh, going into the next turn, Ezreal's pretty good. I think I end up buying him and just keeping him on my bench. I forgot to build Hand of Justice. Last turn, I'm going to go ahead and put that on Akali right now. That's a really good item for her. Um, but yeah, I end up playing the Ezreal over the... Here, let's go back a tiny bit. I do end up playing the Ezreal. I think it's because all my assassins were one star and Vi is two star and Ezreal is just such a good unit. Um, if you guys have been watching me before, again, like I always say how awesome Ezreal is. His ultimate is just really one of the coolest things in the game. Um, do we end up winning this fight? This Yasuo 3 is kind of scary. So if our Katarina doesn't actually end up hitting him, it's not going to look too good for us. Ooh. 
Hmm. Did he? How did he not take that much damage? That's kind of crazy. All right. Next turn. Uh, not much to buy here. So we're just going to skip this. We'll skip the next fight also. We're just really looking for a carousel carousel item here. So we could go for anything. Again, I'm just looking for legendary unit items. So this this uh, Spear of Shojin is going to be great for my Ezreal. Guardian Angel is good for almost any of the like frontline or damage legendaries. Uh, Giant Slayer is not bad. There, there are a lot of good options here. But I think Spear of Shojin is the best. Let's see if I end up getting it. And I do not. All right, that's not cool. I could go Gunblade for Kane if I end up getting him. If you get like a Warlord Spatula Kane with Gunblade, it's a decent combo. And that's honestly what I'm going to replace with this Akali. Kane or like Yone is good with Gunblade too. They're both like super, super strong carries right now. I'm just going to drop that on her. Oh yeah, I'm lagging right now. I don't know if you guys saw. Whenever I pl pressed buy XP, it like took a couple seconds to register. Do you guys see that? So I was pretty like confused right now because I had, had to do a roll down, but the game's just so delayed. I don't know, like we see on the top right, I, I have 130 ping, which is high, but this is taking more than 100 milliseconds. Am I wrong? Uh, man, the, oh man, this game has given me PTSD remembering what happened before. I end up playing set, which is a mistake because set is terrible. And yeah, just never play set right now until they change him. He just literally does nothing. I don't think my Katarina ulted this game, did she? Yeah, she did not. Uh, going into the next shop, not much to buy here, so we're going to skip ahead. I end up selling the set because I remembered how terrible he was. I'm still used to the early part of this set 4 where set was one of the best legendaries, so whenever I see him, I like instinctually click him, but like you shouldn't do that because he is so bad right now. I'm mispositioned badly against this guy. Also, my Ezreal didn't go off, so I think we lose this one. It's not like too, too bad of a loss. We end up killing a couple of the units. So it's not the worst thing in the world. But like this game, I feel like we should have done a ton better because we have this extra Nico. We got great items. We just spent so much gold on the cat too. And we weren't able to hit the late game quite yet. Like we didn't hit a random Azir. Um, didn't get too many like of the more powerful like four or five cost upgrades. So it's kind of a shame in that sense. We get a Last Whisper here, not the best item. But you can't always win every game, and a lot of people try to do that. But, like, as long as we're climbing, it's all good, you know? Um, so I'm going to roll down here. Also, like, I'm lagging during the roll down still. Uh, so I'm pretty sad about that. This time it isn't as bad. I think I was, like, alt-tab before trying to fix everything. I, like, disconnected my phone from Wi-Fi. I disconnected all my devices from Wi-Fi. I'm not really sure if it helped that much, but maybe it did. Um, I forgot to sell my Nidalee before the roll down. Like, it's just a lot of bad things happen. So we get back to four assassin, luckily, luckily enough. I'm going to go ahead and drop the locket on Jarvan. Warlord on the cane, as we talked about before. I'm going to hodge him as well. And this last whisper is just going to be useless. I'll put it on Ezreal just because he's kind of the only person who auto attacks. So I'm going to drop down to like maybe three Warlord right now, just because I didn't end up getting the Azir. If you don't get Azir and you only have one spatula, you can't really get to nine Warlord. But yeah, excuse the bad play this game. It's really just because I was lagging during the rolldown, so I was kind of not fully focused on the game. Uh, but you should definitely sell your chosen unit before rolling down there 100% of the time. So here it's like kind of weird. I'm not, I'm not weak, but I'm not strong because I don't have, I have a ton of pairs. So it's like I should be rolling here. I don't know why I'm not. What did I just sell? I sold Zin Zhao. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, because I had four Warlords. So put in uh, Morgana for the extra... What do you call it? Oh, yeah. I also should have Nikoed this cane. I don't know why I'm hesitant on it. Uh, I think I wanted to wait one more turn before rolling, maybe. I'm not 100% sure, but I definitely should have just Nikoed him there. It was like too good of a Nico. Because I'm going to end up losing to this guy and then having one life. So it's like, don't make that mistake in your game. I probably could have got like top two if I Nikoed because I just... Maybe I still lose to this guy. This guy has Yone too. He's really strong. But the loss wouldn't have been that bad. I don't get punished. I get the free cane there. But yeah, now we do the roll down. Trying to hit like pretty much any legendary two star. And just play like random units plus three warlord. I, I pretty much gave up on cat three. I should have bought the extra cat to replace this cat. But um, end up hitting the Azir so it doesn't really matter. 
I get set two, but again, set two is useless. Like you don't really need to play him. Um, and I just panicked here. But double-handed justice on set, Quicksilver Sash on set, and you guys are about to see why this unit is so, so, so bad. Ah, oh, man, never play him. Watch him, watch him. What did he do there? What did he ult? The unit is so bugged and, like, weird. And I still have this Nico. I have it chosen on my bench. Yeah, it's lag, guys. Just forgive me on this one. The other games are much better to watch, but, like, we still got fourth place somehow, even though we screwed up the start so badly with the... Uh, not playing the Warlords and leveling up early. Uh, we had a bad mid game, not Nikoing the Katarina and rolling a ton for her and not hitting her. So it's both like bad play combined with bad luck. The play from stage two costed us like so much life and so much gold. Um, these roll downs, I rolled down twice without selling my chosen because I was like tilted from my internet, not tilted. Like I just wasn't thinking properly because I started lagging so much while playing the game during my roll downs. Um, so I just forgot to do some things. I didn't position, didn't use my Nico in the late game, and despite all of that, we got fourth place in like a six master lobby, was it? So if you're not master and you're thinking you need to play like perfectly to climb, clearly you do not because this happens in like all my games because I'm always like watching TV while I'm playing TFT, eating while I'm playing TFT, cooking while I'm playing TFT. So there's really no excuse not to try to at least get to masters if you are in diamond and thinking you need to play like super, super well. Like we made a ton of mistakes this game. We got a little unlucky. We had good items, but not like super, super perfect items. Uh, we didn't hit that many two-star legendaries as we should have. If we use a Nico, we could have obviously. And if we um, got a better chosen instead of the Sejuani, or like if we played the Sejuani, if we sold in Italy before, like this game could have gone a lot differently. Uh, we could have also rolled one turn earlier when we were at 29 life instead of at eight life. So I just listed off like 20 different mistakes that you guys can avoid in your games um, in order to get to Masters. But these next two games, I play a little better. Um, they're not disasters like this. Um, but again, like even if you play like a disaster, you could still get top four in these games, which is crazy, right? Look at my team. I have three two stars on my team, Kane, Set, and Jarvan. The rest of my team is one star, and we still got fourth place. Um, so yeah, there's no excuse. Um, if you think you need to play perfectly to climb, you clearly don't. But let's forget about this game because like when I was playing it, I was super, super tilted from the stage two. And then like I started getting internet issues. The next two games, we're going to be playing three games today. Uh, they all go much better. Um, I play better and like I don't have any of these like tilt issues as much as I did this game. So let's just go into the game two and try to forget about this one. But hopefully you guys learn from my mistakes so you don't repeat them in your games. All right, let's go ahead and hop into game two. As you guys can see, we are in the, we're the only diamond in this lobby. The rest of the people are masters, um, as we can see from their borders. So let's just go ahead and start again. I like chain vests. Let's see what we end up getting here. It is a chain vest, we could skip ahead. Uh, yeah, that's what we got. So again, like in that defensive item carousel, some people like, Belt for Zeke's. Uh, I've even seen people take Megatron because they like QSS, but I think Chain Vest is going to be the best here because I like building Locket. Um, Sunfire Cape's pretty good. Guardian Angel's pretty decent. Uh, there aren't too many bad items you could build with Chain Vest. So we got a new news, which is three gold. So we do have potential Brawlers. We have a bunch of Vanguards here too, but I think I'm just going to play double Wukong just because they're pairs. So I might as well just uh, go ahead and play them. And I don't need to keep the Maokai with armor because there's a new brawler here in case I want to put the armor on someone else. So I just went ahead and sold him. Uh, we got a Negatron Cloak. So two defensive items, not exactly what you want to see because you can't really build anything with this yet. But hopefully we get a good item here or like a ton of gold in order to make up for it. So in this next shop, or not this next shop, the shop that we just had, I went ahead and bought the Lissandra. You always want to mix a damage and tanks and we have our tanks already already so we just need some damage lissandra and aphelios were kind of the only two options there yasuo is also an option i could go ahead and buy him too uh, aphelios isn't really a unit anymore though so we get a glove which doesn't really do anything we got a tiny bit more gold so we just bought everything in our shop got another garen there which is good before uh vanguards so here we have to think like do we want to level up 
Do we want to stay at level three, try to make interest in like the next turn? And generally in the early game, you want to go ahead and level up if you think you can win streak. So what that means oftentimes is, do you have enough gold to level up? Do you have some upgraded two stars? Do you have a good item you can build? Don't really have any of that except for one two star. So I went ahead and didn't level up. Uh, so it's, yeah, sometimes stuff like that happens. It's like, you don't get a slammable item. And when I don't get that, I try not to win streak. But if I have like so much gold, like sometimes I'll level or if I have a lot of two stars, but we went ahead and skipped that there. Going into the next round, we ended up losing this to one unit. He leveled up too, so we would have beat him actually. Uh, we get to either finish the Lissandra or go, or go for the Vayne. I've seen Vayne carry work a couple of times, so I wanted to try to try it out and experiment with it. So I went ahead and bought the Vayne. It is a Dust Vayne, which is perfectly fine. Like Sharpshooter is obviously better because I like playing Sharpshooters, as you guys already know. But with the Quicksilver Sash, I'm thinking if I get like two attack speed items on this Vayne, it actually could be pretty good with like Dusk even, uh, just because we have so many Vayne's. Um, but now I just went ahead and leveled up because I'm not going to slow roll for a vein, so I don't really care about getting her to 3-star, but like if it happens randomly, I'll take it. But right now she's like an okay QSS holder, and um, it lets me use my items, so I just went ahead and leveled up there. So in this fight, he built a ZZ Rod. ZZ Rod's always like a really good item in this meta because of all the assassin players, but it's not enough to beat us this time in the early game, so I'll go ahead and skip this. And this next shot, pretty interesting. I swapped out at my team a tiny bit. I kind of want to try to find a way to make 10 gold. We'll probably have to say goodbye to the vein uh, if we lose. So that guy's going Assassin Diana. Someone has Janna chosen. Uh, a lot of ZZ Rots. I think we saw like two or three ZZ Rots. But yeah, we're going to try to either pre-level here or make 10 gold. I'm leaning towards making 10 gold, but we'll see how this fight goes. This guy's got chosen Jarvan. Probably not going to win this because he has a very strong unit to start off that game. Um, so I think here I just go ahead and um, try to pre-level instead. Uh, just because, like, I don't know. Maybe I should have just made interest here now that I think about it, looking back at it. Because we already have a chosen unit, so we can't get, like, a two-cost chosen or three-cost chosen by leveling up. So maybe we should have just made econ there now that we're looking at it we would have leveled up next turn anyways just because it wasn't that expensive but it is a little weird so we have a chain vest i'm aiming towards going for a rod here and i get that and that's just because i have armor so i like building lockets so we'll just skip ahead uh, in this next shop we didn't really get too much we got the lux which is good for divine uh, i'm gonna go ahead and build this locket on the wukong and backline everyone uh, just so it hits my whole team. And I always want to try to put my Lux in a corner. That's why I put her over there instead of over here. Um, just because she hits more units when she's in a corner. Because, like, her orb thing. I don't know what it's really called, but her light binding travels further on the map. So you'll have, like, a slightly higher chance to hit more people with her ability. And, like, people might say, like, oh, you should do the same with Nidalee because she does more damage the further away people are. But she's, like, level 1, so she doesn't really matter that much. I'd rather hit more people with a stun from Lux. Uh, good that we win here because then we get to make interest. Let's go into the next shop. And we got a Teemo and another Nidalee there. Uh, we could also pick up this Janna just because Janna's a good unit. But let's just play Teemo for the Sharpshooter, and that's going to amplify our... Uh, Vayne's damage a little more. I know we had it before with Nidalee, but Nidalee, one star, she really doesn't do anything in the game. So obviously Teemo's going to be better. So this guy, he's looking pretty weak. He's running three fortune. He does have like two two stars, but so do we. Uh, so I think we do win this just because fortune's kind of, it's just like a weak team. Uh, it's great for your economy, but you'll probably lose a lot of games, but it's okay. That's kind of what they want to do. But just keep that in mind whenever you're playing Fortune. Try not to be, like, too greedy with it. Like, know when to cash out and when not to. Uh, next shop here. Nothing too enticing. I could, could go, like, the yumi Janna combo, but I think I just wanted to make 20 gold there. You could, like, technically I should wait till I kill the golems so that I have a chance to get more gold. 
Um, but sometimes I'm lazy. Sometimes I'm multitasking when I'm playing, and I might have been doing that here. So I'm not always at my computer when I play the game. <laughs> I don't know if that's what you guys do also. Uh, luckily, we were able to make 30 gold anyway, so we didn't really get punished for that. But yeah, oftentimes I'm multitasking whenever I'm playing TFT. Bow on the vein for sure. We're not going to go for three-star vein anymore, but she's an okay item holder. Not the best, obviously, but like I just have no one who could use these items yet. So I'm just kind of trying to salvage this game and obviously building lockets one way to try to do that just because it's a good early game item in this next fight we're facing a guy with a zz rod but we have a pretty good tank line it's actually close i forgot who won this fight we did barely somehow we were able to do enough damage to his back line with this vein and teemo so that wasn't too bad let's look at the damage chart after this yeah, Vayne ended up, and Teemo, the one-star Teemo with no items ended up doing a ton of damage. Same with Lux. Uh, they're just really good in the early game. This next shop, Shen. Shen's built in pretty much every composition because Adept is so strong right now. He's both an Adept and Mystic, so he's just like one of the perfect tanks in a lot of situations. Just because he he covers all your grounds, he's a good unit on his own. Uh, Yone is really strong in this meta, so whenever you get a chance to play Yone, like obviously Shen's going to be a great person to partner him up with so there's just like a lot of sense to play Shen right now until they like nerf him or nerf adept or nerf Yone. All right so this fight here hmm this other guy's pretty strong because he's got Galio right but my team is melting him. I, got, I have a really good front line like I have two two stars in my front line and then the two star Vayne in, as my back line it's looking a little close. I think we managed to edge this one out. Let me skip ahead. Yeah, just one by one unit. Um, but that was pretty close. Oh, yeah, and we leveled up to level six before just because we had pretty good gold and we were kind of on a streak. We were at a three-game win streak before. Um, so whenever you're trying to keep up a win streak, try to keep up the levels. Uh, I got the Warwick. We don't really need to play Hunter yet, but with the Quicksilver Sash and a bow, I am thinking about playing Ash. So you just want to hold on to Warwick for the like Hunter synergy. And he's also a Divine, so I could play him over the Wukong if I get like a random two-star Warwick early. But I'll go ahead and play him now just because he has a Divine. Shen's not really bringing anything to the table, so I'll just put in the Warwick right now. Okay, this guy's super strong. He's got Aurelia 2, Janet 2. We're, we're just going to lose this. There's no, no reason to look at that fight. Unlucky, that guy's super strong. He had a bunch of two stars. Did he, let's check, did he roll at all? He had 20 gold, so he rolled a tiny bit. So I guess he deserves to be that strong. He's on a win streak and he rolled. Uh, I don't know if I would have done that. Again, it's like, even though keeping a win streak gets a lot of gold, it's risky to roll down because if you don't hit anything, you just kind of threw like a free top six at least, if not like a top four. Uh, so I'd, whenever I'm wind streaking hard, I generally try not to do things like that. We want the sword here, but didn't get it. We want sword because we want to build the giant slayer. But I could go ahead and just take another bow to build another ash items. The other items here, they are really awful for my team right now if I'm going for ash. Normally in other comps, you take like the negatron to build chalice of power with the tier on Teemo. But since I kind of am leaning towards ash right now, I want to just grab more bows for her because you can build a lot of different items um, for her for that. So we got the Aurelia. So we have the Adept uh, if we need it. We actually have four Divine also. So go ahead and drop the Aurelia in whenever you get more synergies. And I want to find a time to swap out this vein so that I could get a better chosen unit. I'm not really sure what that time is. It's normally when you find like a better item holder. And maybe I could have played this Jin over the vein. I'm not really too sure who does more damage, the two-star Vayne or the one-star Jin, with like pretty much no items. Quicksilver Sash isn't a real item in the early game. It's really only a late game item. Uh, this guy is super, super weak. He does have the Ash though, uh, which obviously is what we wanted. So a little unfortunate there, but we were able to squeeze out a tiny win there. Okay, so in the next shop, we are at 62 gold. So that's 30 gold to level up. So last turn we were... 32 gold to level up so it's like whenever you want to level up on stage three five which a lot of people do oftentimes up to level seven you generally only do it if you can stay above 30 gold and you pretty much always do it if you could stay above 40 gold um but 
we didn't get like that much economy in the early game, so we were not in that position there. But just something to keep in mind if you're playing the game and like you have a ton of gold and you're wondering whether you could go to level seven or not. Another reason to go up to level seven is if you're win streaking or if you're you don't have a chosen yet and you want to try to hit the four cost chosens and get a couple extra natural rolls there. So this guy, I can't tell if he's that strong. He has a Sejuani. And he has like a two-star backliner, but hat's not the best item. Oh, he also has two-star cannon, so we should lose this one. Okay, we got the second Warwick, which is pretty huge, uh, assuming we hit the Ash. I'm going to go ahead and sell my Vayne just because she doesn't do much anymore, and I want to get a new chosen unit. So you cannot get two chosen units at the same time, so you always have to sell one before picking up the other one. So there's always like a slight risk. Oh, also notice how I put the bow on Wukong. Because I know I'm selling Wukong like very, very soon. You might as well just throw a random item on him. It's not going to be too bad. So we got a pretty big drop here, except the item's not that great. We got a lot of gold. We got nine gold and a Nico, which obviously is pretty huge. Um, but we'll pick up the Ashes there. Probably pick up the Sejuani and roll a tiny bit more because we really need a two-star carry in the back line. But this is really tough. I think I end up taking the Sejuani... Just because, like, mm, I didn't. Mm, that's weird. In hindsight, it might have been better to take that Sejuani and stop rolling. I guess because I didn't have a damage dealer. I didn't really need a two-star tank. I needed, like, a damage unit instead. Um, but I go ahead and get the Ash, drop the items on her. Also, I had two Ashes, so there was a pretty good chance I would just hit the two-star if I rolled down to maybe, like, 20. I think I should have rolled down to 20 here instead of 30, but I kind of ran out of time just because... I got kind of confused in the shop. A lot of things change. Like, it's really tough to say what to pick up and what not to pick up during the roll downs. It's kind of by feel. But again, I was just trying to keep a balance of front line and back line. And since we didn't really have anyone in the back line, I wanted to keep rolling there. So we have Divine Dazzler Lux. I think I pass on that too. It really sucks passing on this Jin, but like, we just don't have items for Jin. We don't have any swords. Um, we also don't really have Riven items to transition into a Dust Comp, but we get the Warwick there, which is pretty big, and we get the Nunu Brawler, which is also really nice. So we could go ahead and play like two Brawler, a couple Divines and Adept, and obviously the Hunters, which is what's going to be carrying us right now. But I need to sell this Wukong in order to fit... Um, what's it called? The Locket on someone, but I think I'm too slow to do that here. Uh, you always want to put it on Kindred, because Kindred, she's going to protect your backline from assassins by putting Locket on everyone. And also she makes great use of the ability power. Not not anyone else really uses ability power that well until you get Set whenever you play Ash. But Set's not even that great, honestly, so you don't really need to wait for that. Had I won this match, I may, may have sold the Aurelias, but... I don't think it would have made that much of a difference. Some people like playing Aurelia with Ash. They go something like Morgana, Aurelia, Shen, and Ash, and just play those units plus anything else. And that's kind of what I'm trying to do here too. Um, so we need to roll down a bit more because we don't have any like items to help us or backline to help us. We really just have a two-star Warwick. And unfortunately, we're not really hitting too much of what we wanted. We did pass on like a couple good like four cost chosens, but again, we just didn't have the items for them, which was a little bit of a shame. We hit the Ezreal here, which is a pretty big upgrade. We get three Elderwood and the two Dazzler. Uh, and obviously, Ezreal is going to be better than Maokai. But yeah, here we just put the locket on the Kindred and call it a day from there. Um, another thing that's going to be really good, since we have the tier, that's likely going to go on Ezreal. Uh, but since I put the locket on Kindred, I'm going to hold off on that for a second, just in case I build Chalice of Power, in which case I may build it on Kindred. I'm not really too sure yet. But this guy got the Ash too, which, I mean, that kind of sucks for us, because that's exactly what we're looking for. But he got the Chosen Ash. We don't have a Chosen yet, which is kind of suspicious. You definitely want a Chosen unit by the time you roll down on 4-1, and if not, after you roll down on 4-2. Uh, so we need to finish this these bow items because we have two bows. So what would work really well is a Giant Slayer. And then if not, like Last Whisper is okay, but both of those got taken. So it's just really, really not great right now. But we'll, we could take a Negatron to build like a Chalice of Power. It's not anything too bad. But 
Let's go ahead and skip ahead. You could also build a Runons, which is pretty good. We'll just drop it on Ezreal here. That way he hits the Ash and the Kindred. Um, it's, yeah, yeah, it's not, not ideal. But at this point, I need to find a way to use this Nico. I did not want to use it on Ash because, like, we could have used it. What I'm saying is that we could have used it a long time ago, but we didn't have any items for her so if she didn't have that many items yet i wanted to keep rolling anyways to upgrade my whole team um but i guess we could have nikoed beforehand also imagine if we got the ezreal from the carousel we could have nikoed ezreal and have ezreal too and probably do really really well this game without much effort but sometimes the game doesn't always happen like that but i've always been a little bit greedier with my nikos and yeah it just comes down to different play style um, but if you Nikoed Ash in like 4-1, like I don't think you'd be that disappointed. But since I'm looking for like a chosen unit, I wanted to keep rolling. And when you keep rolling, you can't really justify using a Nikos uh, quite yet. So I don't really have much to play here. So I'm just going to play the Aurelia over the Shen because she's divine. I probably should have done that earlier, but just didn't realize it in time. Because again, there's a lot of stuff you need to pay attention to in TFT, so you're like pretty much never going to play perfectly. There's always going to be a ton of mistakes you make each game, but luckily like your opponents, they suffer from the same exact syndrome. I don't know what the word is, uh, but yeah, they don't, they play far from perfectly too, and you just have to play better than them to win games in the long run. Uh, that talent smurfed on us. Uh, he got chosen talent. It's really rough. Someone got chosen Ash, someone got chosen talent, and I have zero items on my Ash that are good. Like Quicksilver is good. It's like one of the best items on her, but it's only good if you have additional damage items and we just we just don't have any damage items. Mm, unlucky. All right, so we got a rod and we got a sword. So we got a giant slayer. We have a rabidons if we want. We could also build a rage blade, which isn't too bad and another locket. Um definitely giant slayer for sure. You could argue you could build a hat on Kindred and maybe like a Titans on Warwick, but I think I ended up building the Locket on the Kindred and then putting a Rage Blade on Ezreal. Uh, Ezreal, since I have the Nico, I'm thinking if I roll a bit on level 8 in a second, I have a chance to get him to 2-star, which is really, really good. Um, so I was just kind of hoping for that. Also, like Ezreal 1 is super, super strong in this meta, especially with the Dazzler buff. Any time to get him, or any way to get him to cast more is going to be really beneficial for your team. Just because his, I've always talked about this in all my other videos. Whenever I play Ezreal, it's like his ultimate is probably one of the biggest like game changers because it it's a entire map buff and debuff. Like what other champion does that? You know. Yeah, that's why I like running carry Ezreal. I probably should have sold Shen here. I might putting it put him in next turn. Um, but maybe making interest would have been better. Because I could kind of put anything in next turn. I, it doesn't necessarily have to be Shen. It could be like any any mist, like any two mystic units. Or just like a random legendary unit. So we, sorry, I skipped ahead too much. We're going to go ahead and level here. Just because I really want to roll again. Uh, and I wanted to roll at level 8. I did not want to stay at level 7 because that would make me too weak. And I wanted to roll because I really need a Chosen, and I really need to use this Nico on Ash. Because I've been holding on to this Nico for too long, just because, in my opinion, I haven't really hit too much. Uh, Set, contrary to popular belief, he is not that great anymore. So if you guys are playing a lot of sets still, I would be careful, because he just doesn't really do much. I've had him with, like, three items. I've seen other players have him with three items, and he just doesn't carry at all anymore. Um, just because they nerfed him a bunch and because there aren't too many brawlers in the game right now and he's really only good against high health targets because his ability does percent health uh, damage so if he targets a tank with a lot of health he ends up doing that damage to the entire the of his spell to other people he hits but since people play like a vanguard some people play like no front line at all some people just play like an aurelia front line he's not going to do that much damage to people compared to what we saw before. So that, in addition to all the nerfs that he's received, makes him like one of the worst legendaries right now. So we get this Kindred, which is pretty interesting. I think I just end up taking this because it is, at, at, after a certain point, you just need to take uh, whatever chosen you can. I know it doesn't actually give us any synerg synergies because we already have, 
two spirit from before but we could go ahead and replace a yumi with maybe a zillion later if we hit it or like with a cassiopeia just to get a better unit in not that yumi's bad but again i just needed to get any chosen maybe it's arguable to just not buy it and keep waiting but i felt like at this point i'm just playing for like top five at this rate because my team's just incredibly weak <laughs> so i just took any chosen that i could get my hands on but if you want to play more greedy i i could justify it you know um, I don't think you'd be that mad if you did it or like, not mad. You guys know what I'm talking about. You wouldn't regret it. Because um, sometimes like in TFT, you're not in control of your game. You're just trying to improve your odds of winning the most. And maybe playing greedy is improving it the most because taking that chosen doesn't improve my team that much until I hit a better mystic than Yumi. Uh, third locket would have been interesting. It might have been a bit overkill just because like three lockets, it expires after I think eight seconds, so you don't really need it. Um, but all these items kind of suck. I think I just go ahead and go for the stone plate for my front line just because no one can really use Titan's resolve on my team. So I think I ended up putting this on, I think Shen. Shen's a slightly better holder of it, but you could put it on Warwick also just because he's two star. I don't think it makes like that much of a difference who you put this item on like in this specific game. Uh, if, if they're both two star, I'd put it on Shen, like without any questions asked. Unlucky that we saw this other Ash, but we kind of needed to use the Nico before. Uh, just because the longer you hold Nico, the more punishing it is, because that just means you have less gold than other people, because Nico, you get it instead of getting gold in the neutral round drops. Uh, we're facing a Riven player. The Ezreal's just doing... Not enough damage when they have these items. So skipping ahead, nothing much to do in the shops. We could roll down to zero to try to get like Shen 2 or a better Mystic or Ezreal 2, but it's just like very low chance of hitting because we only have one pair. I generally only like rolling if you have like three or more pairs or if you're like very low health. We are kind of low. The whole lobby is kind of tight, so you actually could justify rolling it down to zero here just to get a Yumi 2 star or like a random like zillion one or maybe you get lucky and hit Shen 2 or Ezreal 2. Um, yeah, I wouldn't regret <clears throat> rolling down all to all the way to zero here. Uh, and you just need a, to make those judgment calls. Just look on the right hand side. You see everyone's health. Like the first place guy is 36 health. I have 33 and like 33 is not a comfortable health mark by any means. Uh, so, like, it's arguable we, we should have rolled down on that last round. But we ended up winning this round, so lucky for us, we did not get punished. So we get another locket here. <laughs> Just throw it on Kindred so it looks cool, right? Um, but yeah, here it's like, can I make it to level 8 or level 9? It costs 70 gold, but since, again, I noticed the lobby was really close, I was just like, whatever, let me just roll it down, get the Shen to get a better Mystic than this Yumi and try to get the, like, maybe I get super lucky get in a random Ezreal too. Because this game, I was really only playing for top four just because my whole team is just so, so, so weak. The whole game. Like, I never played a strong Chosen. I never had the right items on my Ash until way too late. And I, yeah, like... Whenever you build double locket, you're not really playing for first place anymore. Uh, unless you are able to go to level 9, which this game I wasn't able to because my economy was just really bad this game. And like part of the reason why my economy was bad was because I got a Nico, and I didn't use the Nico early enough to power spike from it. Um, just things to keep in mind as you apply them to your game. But we're top 5 now, so I'm pretty happy about that. Three people are low health. So it's probably a top four here, at least. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to keep rolling down, I think. Yeah, because I need the Shen. Like, again, even though we're second place, the lobby's way too close, so I just wanted to roll down as much as possible. I make a mistake. I end up getting the Kindred he 3 here, but, like, I don't have enough gold to hit it, so I should not have bought that. So I just lost the gold by doing that. Um, but we finally get the Zillion. I'm pretty sure Zillion 1 is better than... The Yumi. I should have put him in the locket range, but I ran out of time. All right, let's check this fight here. It's a Talon player. Normally, a lot of players have been building a Guardian Angel on Ash to try to counter the Talon, and it's actually a pretty effective counter if you guys haven't tried it yet. 
Um, so if you guys are playing this comp and having a lot of trouble against these talons, it's like something to consider. Yeah, unfortunate, because this guy was like one health, and if we killed him, we would have guaranteed top four. But he was able to eke it out again. But we got top four anyways, the other guy died. Uh, so roll down to zero because we're on last life. So we could hit Zillion 2, we could hit Shen 2, we could hit Ezreal 2. All good stuff. We end up hitting the Shen, so that's perfect. And again, keep rolling to zero. I think I end up selling the Kindred to try to hit Ezreal or Zillion. Because uh, again, it was a mistake to buy this to buy the second Kindred because I lost a the gold there. I would have been able to kept that Zillion otherwise. That's the difference. Um, but yeah, now, now I'm like, I have more time to position. I should have scouted a little bit, but you only have so much time to do stuff during a turn. A lot of TFT, it's like gated by how much time you have and how quickly you do things. So even though it's not like a mechanically intensive game, you still need to, what do you call it? Um, do things like relatively quickly and being fast does help, but you just need to, I'd rather, if I had a choice to be like very fast at clicking buttons or like having a bigger brain, I definitely have a choose having a bigger brain for TFT. So we get third here, not too bad considering I don't think we hit that much stuff that game. And um, yeah, that's it for that one. Uh, let's go on to game three. All right, we are into game three, three diamonds here, five masters. Uh, let's just start off with the carousel again. I like going for tier swords, swords probably the most important. And then I like glove a lot, ability power is also good. Um, yeah, I'm just going to give up on the sword, go for the tier, just because everyone's fighting for that there. But yeah, last game, it was, uh, yeah, I, I'm not mad about getting third place, just because we could have used the Nico earlier and saved our, our life, but we decided to greet it and it didn't pay out. So whenever that happens, you take a risk and it doesn't work out. Getting top four is perfectly fine. Uh, obviously, there are a lot of other mistakes we made, but um, everyone is making mistakes like no one really plays perfectly uh yeah here i'm afk see what i mean like i told you guys like i'm afk a ton i don't know what i was doing here but like i just came back right now <laughs> when i was playing the game so we get two lissandras doesn't really help that much but like ludens on like a dazzler lissandra chosen is actually pretty funny to watch um so if you guys haven't tried that yet i do suggest it um, but i'm not gonna take a duelist fiora i don't really like chosen fiora maybe with a blue buff it could be good but other than that, it's not really my style. Um, I was thinking about trying to play a Diana game, so that's why I'm holding on to these Lissandras, just because <sighs> playing Diana, you get to turn your brain off. But here we get a Chosen Cultist TF, and I love Chosen Cultists. Anyone who's watched me pretty often already knows that, so I definitely want to try to buy this here. So I go ahead and put her in. Uh, we get a ton of gold from this, and I noticed that we dropped a Z here, and we have two Zs in our shop, so I just go ahead and buy that. Obviously, that's going to be really good, but it's just like, if I was AFK, I would have lost that, and I would have been punished, and I wouldn't have Z2 at this point in the game. But because I was here, I got it, so that was lucky for me. But um, choose when you go get some water like very wisely, I guess, is my tip here. Uh, this Lissandra, I don't really want to complete quite yet, because maybe I don't want the tier on her. Also, like, I want to level up, but I don't have enough gold for that because we have we spent too much gold on the Zed. So it's kind of like a first world problem. Uh, we had too much money that we had, or we hit too much stuff. Our team got too strong that we weren't able to level up. It's a little unfortunate, but like, even though this guy's level level four, like, we still have a very good chance to win just because Zed is level two and he's one of the strongest early game units. Uh, did we end up winning this? I think we did. Yeah, it's not really close. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and pick up these TFs. I also completed the Lissandra so I could level up and play them here. So we end up going for another Zed. Oh, yeah, also I built the Locket just because I prioritize early game a lot because uh, you get more gold when you win. Um, I had a bunch of two stars, so it like makes complete sense to keep playing them. I also sold the Lissandra there because I have two two-star TFs, and they change cultists so that when you play more cultists, it's not really a waste anymore. It like Galio gets stronger based on how many, based on the star level of all your cultists. So I think even if you have two copies of the same unit, he still gets stronger. But if someone knows for sure, correct me on it. But I do think this TF did make my Galio stronger. Um, yeah, if someone could confirm that for me, let me know. But 
I just rem remember this game. I won like every single fight, so I doubt that playing two TFs did not make him stronger. Because if not, I'd be playing like a fake unit. Going into the next shop, we hit another Zed here. At this point, I'm like, is there a way to play a Zed game? We don't have the items for it. We have just early game items with the Locket, and Locket is played in Zed comps. So you put it on like Evelyn or Akali is perfectly fine. But you need like RFC and Quicksilver Sash for the Zed. So unless I can get one of those components here, it doesn't make that much sense to go for. I also have the chosen Twist of Fate, which means that I can't get chosen Zed until I sell it. So it's a bit of a dilemma. But I think we just make easy work of all these rounds just because we have Cultus like chosen. So we have Galio right away and we have the Zed too. So it's like you can kind of AFK these, these rounds. I probably should have pre-leveled there instead of buying all those units, just FYI, because I wasn't making any interest there, but I think I forgot about pre-leveling when I was playing this. Uh, so we're last pick, we don't get a choice of what we get on Carousel, but if I did have a choice, I'd definitely pick Bow. But instead we go for a Crit or a Negatron because those build Quicksilver Sash, and Negatron also builds Runon, so it's pretty good too for Zed. Uh, so it's actually like you need three bows or want three bows, but you also want like two negatrons. So it's not the end of the world that I get that. Uh, so this new shop, nothing much here. So I'm just going to go ahead and make interest and also try to level up. Just because we're on a win streak, whenever you're on a win streak, you always want to try to level up. And I don't have much to put in, so I'm just going to play this extra level one Z. It's not ideal, but like, what can you do, you know? So we get into this game here. I probably could have put a tier on the chosen TF because I, I'm definitely going to sell him. I'm not actually going for TF3 because it's like, unless it's for mages, it's honestly not that great. Um, but like, I guess some people could try to experiment with it. Like, I think I went for it anyways this game because I wanted to try to just mess around and have some fun because, yeah. But yeah, we're making easy work of all these rounds. There's another TF here, but like... <laughs> I don't know. I think I ended up buying it for fun. <laughs> I probably shouldn't have. I should have just made interest instead. Well, what did I buy in the shop? Oh, yeah. Since I justified picking up a Yumi because Yumi is really strong in the early game and he helps out Zed in terms of giving him more attack speed, I decided to play Yumi over the extra level 1 Zed. Um, so that's why I bought all the TFs. Uh, but this fight, it's really rough. It's looking pretty close, right? Maybe Galio saves it for us. Giant Slayer is good against Galio, but the Yasuo never ended up attacking us. He's also level 4, we're level 5, so he's really low health. He's 66 life. I don't get it. His team wasn't like that weak. He just happened to face me, who was the strongest. So we're getting more of these TFs, but you don't even want this TF 3 star, because I want like a new Chosen, but maybe I could go some sort of Cultist build with just a random 3 star TF. Like, Cultist, again, it does benefit from the more three stars you have. And if they're giving me a free three star, you might as well take it. So from this uh, neutral round, I got some gold. I also got a spatula. So those don't really help either of my builds, the Zed or the TF build. So uh, at this point, I'm thinking, let me just slam items and try to play for top four. But, I, like, I didn't really want to build a chalice at this point because my carry is Zed, and he doesn't really benefit that much from it. I play the Janna here for Mystic. Um, but do I level up here? I think I did just because I want to keep my win streak and I didn't feel that confident quite yet. So yeah, just level up, sell stuff to make interest, um, and go from there. Did it end up helping us this game? So his, he's got two hunters and the ash, but he has no items for it. He probably could have built Quicksilver Sash on his ash because Almost no matter what, he's going to be building that. But yeah, I just sell the Yumi for interest. I probably should have just sold the TF. So I had like the six cultist dream in mind for some reason. I was thinking like, oh, maybe I could go like dust bat and like six cultists with ribbon carry. But I really think I should have just sold the TF because I, <sighs> I don't know. Cultist is good, but I've just never played it before. So whenever you don't know how to play something, you probably should avoid doing it because it's going to be... A rough time so we already leveled up to level six and the reason why i did that was it allowed me to keep my win streak and it's often like a surprise factor because no one levels to level six on stage three one um and i misplaced my elise there i didn't mean to move her away from the locket square um, that was a big big no-no uh, it would have 
tanked a lot more health had he or had she get hit by the locket. But luckily, we, we still pull off the win because we're just so incredibly strong right now. Uh, so seven game win streak. We definitely want to level up to level seven over here. What did we get in this shop? I skipped ahead too quickly. So we got an Elise and an Akali. A popular Zed build revolves around having like Elise and Pike. Uh, so you have Keeper with your ninjas. So it's like three cultists, four ninja. You have Elise, Pike, and who is the third person? There's one more cultist. I just can't think of it right now. Um, but you play that along with four ninjas and, oh, uh, Evelyn, Evelyn. So you get Shade, Assassin, and Keeper. And then you get like the cultist as a bonus. It's like a decent comp. Um, so you want to hold on to those units if you are going for ninjas. I, I felt like I had a chance to still, just because I have a Quicksilver Sash if I complete this here. And there's a chance I get two bows still, just because I haven't gotten any of my neutral rounds. It's like, I just need like two bows. I don't need three, even though I would like it. Um, and I have like so many Zeds that it's just like, why wouldn't I at least try to go for it? Who actually wins this? Okay, we still win that one. That's crazy. So... That's really lucky for us because now we could level up to level 7 after the carousel. And again, I talked about this in the last game. You generally only want to do it if you can keep above 30 or 40 gold. But since we're on such a big win streak, we want to go for it to try to keep our team strong. So on this carousel, obviously you want the bows, no bows. We want the crit. Someone took crit. Ah, that's, that's a shame. So there's not really too much to take. We could go tier to maybe build blue buff on a Kali. Um, or we could go, what did we have? We had a spatula. There's no spatula items that can really be built here. Um, so I think I just go for the rod just cause it's the most gold. All right. So next turn here, we do end up getting kindred. Kindred's pretty good. So with Janna, you guys know, I love the kindred Janna combo just because it heals so much, but we level up and just try to think of what the strongest thing to play is here. I think it's just a random kindred, uh, just cause kindred's such a individually strong unit. But if you guys have other opinions on that, let me know in the comments below. And like, let me know what game you're talking about whenever you guys comment, so. Oh yeah, I saved my level up till the last second to try to trick people out so they don't think I level. So they're like, oh, he didn't level, so maybe I don't need to. Um, sometimes it works, I don't, I don't know if it actually does, but it, I like to convince myself that it works because sometimes I only level up if I see other people doing it, if I'm trying to keep a win streak. So yeah, you could just do it at the last second to try to trick people out. Uh, this guy had Jinx too, but we barely squeaked out the win with this Kindred just like autoing her down. Uh, so it's like a really good thing that we leveled because we saved, we gained like three gold from this plus one from the win. So we got like four gold from that for costing us three interest. So it's like overall it's a win. Okay, so we have the Ari. So we could go like four spirit Zed. That's what I was thinking at this point because like the TF's obviously not happening. Uh, the ninjas, they could happen, but since we already have a bunch of spirits, it's like we might as well try to go for them. I'm going to go ahead and drop this rod on the TF because I know that I'm not going for him anymore. Um, yeah, it is arguable. I could have kept the TF, try to go for like some sort of cultist dust build. But after getting the Ari, I was thinking we could go for some sort of shade spirit build and like we have so many zeds and we're still win streaking it's like we're probably gonna end up getting it unlucky that we faced this kindred 2 player kindred 2 chosen insane champion and we never hit the tf3 so we never got a early game power spike from that uh, we got the zed here which is pretty good so i think this is a time where we sell the tf and play like a real team comp because again i've just never played the like six cultist compositions with like three star Elise, three star TF. So it's just like not something that I'm quite used to. But if you guys know how to play it, go ahead and go for that comp. I make a mistake here. I sold the Elise and you definitely should not do that. You should be keeping that Elise to try to uh, play keepers with Kennen when you go ninjas. I think I had my, like in the game, I had my mindset on playing What's that called? I had my mind set on playing. Oh yeah, the spirit version of Zed. So that's why I held off on building it, but, um, or that's why I sold the unit. But 
you should always keep your options open because I could have sold this other TF instead to make interest or like keep my gold or whatever you want to call it. So we end up building the rapid fire on Zed. And then I, I made the decision to just put the Negatron on him because worst case, I just build a Dragon Claw if I don't get Quicksilver or Runons. Uh, not the end of the world if you have that item because sometimes you don't always get the items you need. So you just got to make the best of it. Uh, contrary to popular belief, you don't have to try to win every game. I see that mistake a lot below, like, pretty much not even below any elo in, like, all elos. Like, people are like, oh, I, like, you didn't win, you suck. Like, that's just not the case. Uh, like, you just need to top four to gain elo, and if you can guarantee not getting eighth by playing really greedy, for example, it's worth it to just slam your items and just make the most out of like a not optimal game like not everything's going to work out perfectly we got the rapid fire cannon which is obviously super super good but like um because we have all these other unbuilt items because like our champions aren't really working out for us right now uh you just want to like there are games where you just have to play for top four and not for first place um so unless we get like magic shen here or we get like um what's it called like a way to replace this kindred and stuff it's like not going to be a thing but it, it, it's all good it's like kind of losing my train of thought right now but yeah right now we're just going to be slow rolling for the zed and hopefully hit the shen as well and play ninjas over the shade compos or over the shade spirit composition oh yeah that's what i was thinking of like we didn't hit the spirit till really late we're not getting the chosens we wanted and like we kind of had an awkward early game after losing that one round to ruin our streak going into the wolf camp. Uh, we also didn't have shade this whole time. We finally got shade, which is nice. Uh, but yeah, now that we got the Shen, go ahead and swap your whole team. I don't really know if playing the keeper or buying the keeper cannon was worth it because it ruins the chance of getting chosen Zed. Uh, it's not that keeper cannon's bad. They're just better options than him. Uh, just because Chosen Zed is super, super critical. Chosen Shen's also really good. Like, pretty much all the Chosen Ninjas are good, but um, I think some are slightly better. But sometimes you just take whatever you get. Um, in this case, it was Kennen. Uh, another reason is that Keeper Chosen isn't really that great because Keepers work best on themselves. So if you don't have, like, another Keeper to buff, I don't think it's, like, that optimal to play them. All right, this is Diana. Diana's like free wins, if you guys are wondering. So if you ever get like chosen Moonlight Diana right now, just play her and build whatever items on her. It's like super easy. You can turn your brain off. So we want the spatula here. Not too much else. Uh, crit would be good for Quicksilver Sash. Bow would be good for Runons. Crit's probably the most important here. So I think it's even more important than Force of Nature just because we're kind of building our whole team around Zed. Let's see if we actually end up getting it. So it's over there on the other side. I don't move because I was thinking he might go for it, but he doesn't want it, so I'll just take it. So perfect. Now that we do have good items, I'm playing for first. Like before, I wasn't. I was talking about like, oh, you need to like build lockets to try to top four. Because I know a lot of players in lower levels they don't like building lockets because they're like, it's not best in slot for anyone, so why would I build it? But it doesn't matter. It saved us so much life total. Uh, we got a huge win streak from building all those lockets, so I have no regrets from building the locket. But now that we do have perfect item Zed, in terms of my econ, I'm thinking like, how do I maximize my chances for winning the game? So if there's a turn where it's like, oh, we could like wait two more turns, lose 20 life to try to get a much better team with that extra like 10 gold of interest, I'm going to go ahead and do that because that's going to make my team the strongest in the long run because we have perfect items. So we just need to hit the champions now and increase our chances for that. Because if we end up hitting everything, like there's no way we're going to lose any round. So now these games are getting pretty easy now that we have the Quicksilver Sash. It's like a huge power spike whenever you get that because all the debuffs from like Dazzler, uh, Frozen Heart, Adept, all, all that type of nonsense, it just doesn't affect your carry anymore. And there's no downtime if they get crowd controlled. Uh, so I'd go ahead and do the slow roll for the Zed here. I end up getting the Pike, which is good for Assassins, and I'm picking up the Yumi. Yumi's good in this comp because she gives attack speed to the Zed. Uh, so it's always something nice as like an extra unit. It also gives you Mystic if I don't have Janna, and I'm probably going to sell Janna soon. She's like the next replacement I'm making. I probably could put in like an Assassin instead of her. If I had Pike 2, I'd put it in, but it's only Pike 1, so 
and I have a, an Akali one, so it's not really worth putting in Assassin yet. Just because like you could put in more traits doesn't mean you should do it. Um, it depends how critical the trade is, though. But like if I have two level ones, buffing them is not going to make them that stronger, you know. But like Zed's level two, so I definitely want to be playing like a level one Evelyn, for example. So we get the Talon, which is nice. I'm going to skip through the wolf camp. We just rolled down to 50 gold to try to get the Zed. I ended up selling the Janna because I want to play the Talon. Um, just because Talon's a better unit than Pike in most cases. I know he gives crowd control, but since we're not doing the cultist stuff, I feel like if I get a random two-star Talon, he's going to be stronger than a two-star Pike. And I also get to deny all the other Talon players because I know that's like a very popular build right now. Uh, if, imagine if that was a spatula. That'd be... That'd be nuts. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to roll back down to 50 again. We got two tiers, which is great for Akali. We have a Guardian Angel or we have a Gargoyle Stone Plate. I actually wasn't too sure which item was better, Gargoyle or the Stone Plate. I ended up building the blue buff on Akali and the Guardian Angel on Kennen. You could also Guardian Angel Zed, but since he has a Quicksilver Sash already, I kind of wanted to get a third damage item on him. But that just wasn't in the cards quite yet. Um, I can't really complain, though, because we got great items for Zed before. So getting these other items that, like, are good but not, like, super, super perfect are is, like, I can't really complain about that. Like, blue buff on Akali, it's not that great because we're not playing Akali carry. If we were going for, like, three-star Akali, it would be really good. And if we had, like, Infinity Edge, like, more Assassins, yeah, I'd be super happy. But, like, since she's not my carry, I don't really care too much about her. Also, they, like, nerfed it recently. So even though it's still good, it's not as strong as it was before. But we just need the Z3. It's stage 5 right now, and not having Z3 in stage 5 is very scary. So I'm going to go ahead and try to all-in right now to try to find it. Just because if I don't hit him... Or if I keep slow rolling, I'm going to lose way too much life total. Um, so I think I should have rolled down a little more here. Um, but I wasn't really hitting any, so I'm just going to wait till next turn. I'm going to the next level. Or not next level, next fight. This guy has Ash 2, Azir 1, Shen 2, Yone 1. Uh, he's not that strong. I've seen stronger boards on 4-5, but he's not weak by any means. Um He's obviously stronger than me because he rolled down to zero, but it's like, yeah, that's why I think I should have rolled more last turn because I'm starting to get outscaled because I only have Zed 2 star. And even Zed 3 star might not be enough to keep me in the game. Um, so skipping ahead, I'm going to roll a ton here. I already bought a bunch of stuff. I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Evelyn just because why not? Uh, she has two items on her, so getting her three star isn't going to be that bad. Um, I see another one of her there. I already have Talon 2, so I don't need the Pike. And we randomly get an Eve 3. It, it sucks. Like, it's It might be a waste of gold. I'm not really too sure, but it's um, better than not having anything at all. With the lockets, it's nice, so it gives me a bigger shield. That was kind of my thought process behind completing it. Um, I mean, she's not horrible, right? She killed one unit there, but I mean, I'd rather have other 3 stars. You know, If I had like 3 star Akali... Or a three star Zed instead, I'd be much happier with that. But like, I guess she didn't do too badly. She's probably gonna lead the damage charts here. But like, a lot of the damage is like fake damage because she overkills a lot of the time. Okay, so on this carousel, I need an, a third Zed item. So I'm not really too sure because none of these items really fit on him. I guess you could build like a Titan's Resolve on him. Maybe a Redemption would have been good for my team. But I actually end up going for this Duelist Spatula. And, and I was just like, whatever, I'm just going to play a duelist as like an extra unit for an extra synergy, because why not? Uh, it gives him more attack speed, which is exactly what Runons and Rageblade or any of those items would have done. So I think getting the duelist bat isn't all that horrible. We get a Xin Zhao in our next stop, or our next shop, so I just go ahead and play him. Um, I'm not going to level up yet, just because... I really need to hit the Z3 because he's my three item carry. I don't really have anything, anyone else. And like, I've slow rolled for so many turns and haven't hit him yet that I'm trying to, or starting to get kind of scared. But I do need to find a time to all in pretty soon. Probably if I hit like a Z naturally on a shop here, I would roll down to zero. Uh, but as, if you did it now, like, I don't think you'd regret, regret it. 
Right, this guy's Ash 2, Morgana 2, Morello. Perfect item Ash in this meta because so many assassins, but are we able to squeeze this one out? We actually did. I mean, he gets so much attack speed from Duelists, it's kind of funny, but oh no, we actually, wait, no, Eve got it. Maybe I can't be that mad at Eve. She kind of is carrying at three star because the whole rest of my team is doing dog crap. <laughs> for the lack of a better word uh it's right before the neutral round so i'm not going to roll down to zero yet uh but i'll probably just all in on six one but yeah we're not that strong i guess we're not that weak either because we have good items but i i really don't feel comfortable like this right now like i have to whenever you have to rely on evelyn carry it's not a good sign i guess she's killing a couple of units wait she did no damage to vagar though Oh, because he has Elderwood, that's why. All right, so skipping ahead, we get a Sunfire Cape, pretty useless. I'll just throw that on either Shen or the Kennen. An interesting idea would be throwing it on Talon just because he jumps around a lot. Uh, you could also put it on Akali because she jumps to their back line. Uh, it really doesn't matter who gets this item. I could also put it on Evelyn because she jumps around too. Maybe Evelyn was the best person to put it on. I think I ended up putting this on, I think... Okay, we hit two Zeds here. Super, super lucky. It might look super lucky, but like we've been rolling for a while, right? And we've hit like no Zeds. We've had like six Zeds since like stage three. So even though it might look really lucky, I don't think it actually was that lucky. We also rolled down like a bunch more gold here. Um, and we finally hit it after spending 20 more gold. So now we want to level up. Uh, play this Yumi that's been sitting on our bench the whole game. And pretty much from here, we kind of can just AFK. Uh, who did I end up putting this on? Yeah, it's like anyone can kind of use this. Like Talon can use it, Akali can use it, Shen can use it, Kennen can use it. Um, does it really matter that much? Maybe. I'm not actually too sure. Here it helped out a lot. It hit his Talon, uh, so it did like a little bit more damage to him. If he had a Bloodthirster, maybe he wouldn't have healed as much, but he didn't, so it didn't end up mattering. So uh, it's late game Sunfire. You never want to see it, in my opinion. All right, now, next shot, we picked up an, an Akali, but, like, are we actually going to get Akali 3? I don't really want to roll anymore, you know? Uh, but skipping ahead, like, there's no not much decisions to be made. You can scout around to try to position around people. Um, oftentimes, if you place, like, your Zed next to the enemy carry or against, like, just away from his whole team, that's always going to be optimal. But it doesn't really matter that much because he has shade, so he de aggros a lot. So he's never going to get targeted anyways, which is like why Zed is so dang powerful because with shade buff, you just disappear and you can't get targeted. Um, so if you ever are facing a Zed and you're wondering like, oh, why is he like not attacking the Zed? Like that's why, because he has the disappearing thing from the shade buff. All right, not much else to do here. I don't want to roll for only one unit. Like... Technically, we need two Akalis and two Shen, so that's a lot to roll for. You're, you might hit one of them with 20 gold, but you won't hit both of them. And I kind of want to hit both of them, so I just chill here. So going on to the next turn. Uh, this guy's Yone 2, three items. That's really scary. Ash 2, three items. Really scary. Do we have enough, though? I think we do. Who actually... Ca oh, man, Eve is killing everyone. I guess we got to put more respect to Eve or something like that. Okay, now on the carousel. <sighs> this carousel was pretty interesting. I just went for the other duelist spat, I think. Wait, I got that. Oh, I, did I want assassin spat? I think duelist spat would have been the best. Let's look at that carousel again, just because it's like, we'll go ahead and pause. Like, what would you guys take here? We could go like hat for Akali. We could go like guardian angel for Akali. Uh, we could go another duelist spat. Uh, just so we don't have to play Xin Zhao. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking Duelist Bat might have been the best. We could have also went for the belt to Zephyr him. But he has 49 life, so I didn't want to go for Zephyr. But if he had like 10 life, I'd take the belt to build a Zephyr. Um, but I just built Yumu's Ghost Blade. Uh, I was thinking I could go for like... Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to go for a Jumping Cannon because... Um, if we look at the guy's team, which we will in just a second... He has, like, he's all grouped up in one spot. Here, let's go back a tiny bit. I actually forgot about this 
thought process when I was playing the game. But yeah, let's go back for a second and wait till we scroll to his team and I'll pause there. Oh, we just missed it. I apologize. Well, let's just go to the fight. Like, I'm too lazy to find it. Um, but yeah, jumping cannon's always going to be really good because he just stuns the entire backline. And since he's a backline composition running Ash and stuff, it's going to be pretty devastating to his whole team. Um, so here he jumps to the back. He's going to stun this whole area with the Guardian Angel. Um, well, I guess my team killed his old team before that happened. But like, if if needed, he would have done that. So I think that would have been a decent pick. But maybe getting another Duelist Bat would have been the best. The reason why I lost that fight was because no one targeted Ash. So I realized that. So I'm going to go ahead and try to play around that. I'm going to roll for this last Akali because I have only one left to find because I have three here, three there, and two more there. You just need nine of them. Unfortunately, I'm rolling pretty slowly. Let's see if I can find her in time. We end up getting the Shen, but no Akali, which is fine. So right now, all I need to do is position. I'm just going to split up my assassins so that if he puts her as Ash in like a weird spot again, I'll be able to kill him. So if you watch the Akali now, she's going to jump right to the Ash afterwards and just go ahead and snipe her. Uh, whereas before, like, only my tanks were attacking Ash, which wasn't enough damage to kill her. And look at this cannon. Like, he's stunning everything. <sighs> I don't know if Duelist would have been better or not, but Assassin's pretty fun to watch, to say the least. You also, you also have to keep in mind, we have to beat him, like, 10 times. Because, not 10, but he had 49 health, so we probably have to beat him at least 3 times, if not 4. Uh, so it's a... Uh, you really need to make sure that you need you get a team comp that can win multiple games and prevents him from like getting lucky once and killing you because you're at 16. We get this item. It's okay. It's not the best. I think I just end up putting it on my Akali because she is my other carry. You could put it on Evelyn, but she's a shade, so she doesn't get targeted that much, so I don't really think it's worth it on her. We get the three-star Akali here, which is really nice. We did roll a lot for it before, but we eventually do get it. Yeah, I'm just going to put it on her just because it's, um, I just need her to live for as long as possible. So whenever you're in a 1v1 scenario, you always want to try to position as much as possible. Um, I want Kenan to jump to all his grouped up units, and I want Akali or Zed, one, or, one of the two, to be near the Ash. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to do that here. Let's see what happened. So yeah, his Ash is there, so Kennen's going to get a stun on her, and she doesn't have Quicksilver Sash, so she's not going to be too much of an issue. Um, but my Akali just... Three-star Akali kind of just smurfed on everyone there, which is really, really nice. I wonder who did the most damage this uh, this game. Oh, it was still Zed, so I guess Akali... Yeah, see what I mean? They nerfed Akali so much. I know she doesn't have the best items because she has two tank items, but... Like... The nerf on her mana lock, what they did is that they increased the time for her to uh, to gain mana from 1 second to 1.25 seconds, so it got like a lot weaker. I probably should have replaced Yumi for a fourth assassin here. That would have helped a lot too. Mystic, it's okay. He has Cassiopeia and Morgana. So he does have a bunch of magic damage, but maybe four assassin damage buff would be too great. So yeah, he keeps putting his Ash in the center or in the front line, which is fine because it worked for him that other fight, but as long as one of my assassins is near the Ash, it's perfectly okay. And my Kennen's like always going to hit him just because my Kennen, his radius is like really big. So as long as we get her eventually, it's fine. So if we get the stun there, then we just get a quick kill, and then that is the game. So yeah, like Zed carry, still a thing if you get a good start with him. We had a big win streak, so that was really nice for us to have, but... Um, the things that we did that other players might not do was level up as fast as possible to try to keep the win streak. Um, and yeah, that's how you get to Masters. Uh, I probably should have all in earlier to get Zed 3 also. I got away with it this time because the lobby wasn't that strong. But once you face like even better players, like if you're trying to climb in Masters, you're going to need to have a stronger team at that point. So you need to all in earlier, get the Zed 3 star, and have a little less gold for later in the game. So... You might not have gotten a Kali 3-star because of that if you roll down for the Zed more aggressively because you won't have as much interest, but you kind of need to do that. If not, you'll just die against better players. And um, yeah, I don't think we should have gone first there because we 
We ended up getting great items, don't get me wrong, but uh, if we got them earlier, we could have kept our win streak more and it would have been a lot easier that way, that's all. Um, and we wasted a lot of gold rolling for Zed also. We had Zed 2 until like stage, late stage 5, early stage 6, I forgot exactly when we hit him. But yeah, that's how you guys get to Masters. Hopefully, hopefully this video helps you guys out a bunch. If you guys are new, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you guys want to get some merch, um, go ahead, check out the link below. I'm going to be having these up until the set ends. Um, maybe once set four and a half comes around, we'll go ahead and get some new artwork or something like that. I have to think of ideas, so we'll see about that. But, <laughs> uh, apart from that, I'll see you guys for the meta snapshot. If this is before posted before Friday. Um, but yeah, I'll see you guys there.